Okay, in this demo we're going to examine the new Horizon 7 VDI instance clone technology and how does it affect any extreme way of sizing. So the first test we are going to do is actually run a bootstorm of 2500 VDI VMs. I have stopwatch utility that I started uh, when I basically started to boot off the VMs and we can see how long it's going to boot up 2500 VDI VMs running Windows 10 and Office 2016 to a state where those VMs are actually accessible by users and ready to receive any workload against them. So we can see the boot process starts, we can see the data stores that we are using, roughly 18 data stores that I'm using in this test. If we go back to the Horizon console, we can see how long does it start before some VMs are being accessible. And I'm basically I'm going to refresh this screen so you can see exactly how long did it took together with all the time that you can see in the stopwatch utility itself. So I'm refreshing after roughly one minute more than 200 VMs already and more and more and more already. I'm basically going to pause and resume this recording so you can see how long did it took. And we can see that after four minutes more than 1200 VDI VMs already. After seven minutes more than 1900 VMs already. There you go. After eight minutes, we have more or less almost all the VMs already within nine minutes. 2500 VDI VMs almost ready within nine minutes and 15 seconds. What we see here is the new VMware Horizon 7 instant clone functionality, which basically allowing you to take a parental VM, fork its master image, and by doing so, forking the memory and CPU utilization, you can actually reduce the footprint of bootstorms, etc. It's also allowed to do very clever stuff, such as updating the VM, so you will not need to, for example, push the Microsoft Hotfixes updates throughout the entire pool whether now what you can do is basically just push the updates to the master VM image and reboot the VMs and that's it they will now inherit the master image that they get it from so I've already prepared the pool and currently I have 2500 VDI VM running on a single X brick here we can see the data reduction numbers that are currently being used not uh, too much capacity which is expected and here we can see the total apps that are currently being pushed. Uh, the machines are in pretty much uh, ideal state. However, because it is Windows 10 that I'm using, it will still consume some apps. Also, what's interesting is that I've uh, installed Office 2016 on the master image. So we have the latest and the greatest from both an operation system point of view, meaning we're running Windows 10 and Office 2016. And what I'm going to do next, I'm actually going to leverage Login VSI, which is the industry standard benchmarking utility, to be able to see what will happen when we push a lot of performance throughout those VMs. Login VSI is actually a very clever benchmarking testing utility. It will mimic real user behavior, meaning that it will run Microsoft Office, send emails, browse the internet, uh, even watch some movie trailers, saw down uh, Excel numbers, pretty much everything that the normal user will do throughout its day. And I've designated Login VSI to connect to the 2500 VDI VMs within a launch window of uh, pretty much 45 till 48 minutes, which is supposed to mimic a normal morning storm, meaning where the, when the users are coming through the office and starting to pop up their applications. So the test is ready, I just need to start it, which is what I'm going to do now. Start the test, give it a name. Login VSI uses the concept of launchers, basically meaning it will connect to all of these VDI VMs and uh, will run its agent that we will see in a second and what exactly it's doing. So let's actually open the first VM in the pool and see what Login VSI is uh, running on it. So we'll get a good feeling of how the software looks like. So we can see, for example, it's open up a Microsoft Word. And in a minute, in a minute it will try to start composing documents, browse uh, emails, and so on and so forth, as I mentioned before. Read the uh, 
PDF files, we'll uh, print those files, we'll try to even zip them. Again, trying to mimic a real user behavior uh, as much as it can. And what we're going to do next is that I'm going to pause the recording and resume every time I see something interesting within what Login VSI is doing, but we'll also see what was the impact in terms of storage, latency, IOPS, everything that will matter to you as a customer or a partner leveraging Extreme IO for your VDI workloads. Here we can see Login VSI is uh, browsing Outlook on the left uh, VDI VMs, to the right it's printing a PDF. You will also see that it's actually trying to browse the internet, compose mails and so on and so forth. I've only opened two screens, but really, as I said, the test will run on 2,500 VDI VMs. It is composing a Microsoft Word document. Here you can see it's actually composing an email and attach a file. Here we can see it's running a movie player to benchmark HTML5 and Flash technologies. Here we can see it's using Microsoft PowerPoint to write, generate, and then view presentations. Login VSI will even mimic uh, user breaks, like uh, taking a bio break or getting some uh, beverage beverages. Okay, so the test is pretty much done. Login VSI already launched all the 2,500 VDI VMs. Now it will roughly take uh, four minutes before it's starting to logging off all the users. So now will be a good time to go to the Extreme IO array and measure uh, what we can see. So to the left, we can see the data reduction numbers, pretty common for link clone type of workloads, which uh, instance clones are member of, at least in terms of the data reduction numbers. Here we can see the IOPS. This is where the Login VSI test started, and this is where it ended. Again, the load is still running because it will take roughly four more minutes for the VM to log off. And what we can do now is basically also measure the block size that are being used throughout the test. We can see a lot of small block size and even larger 16K and 13K block sizes that are being used as well. And what we're going to do now is basically zoom in to the start and the end of the test and change the view to latency so we, we can view what was the latency that was observed throughout the test. So let's zoom into the latency and let's do even a closer zoom. So we can see that apart from a very small burst of 1.4 millisecond latency, the average latency itself was roughly around 1 millisecond latency, even when the majority of the users have been logged in. This is the right latency. The read latency was roughly around 0.2 millisecond latency. So overall, amazing results. Considering this is a single X-Brick, we are running 2,500 VDI VMs on it. Windows 10, the generate more uh, IOPS, and Office 2016, that generates even a further significant workload of IOPS on the VDI VMs from a storage CPU and memory perspective. So very good results, roughly around one millisecond latency, pretty much what you would expect when you're running your consolidated workloads on Extreme IO. And the last thing we need to wait for is basically for all the VMs to log off, and then we can generate the Login VSI indexing score, so we can see what was the score that Login VSI now that Login VSI have already logged off the VMs, let's run the analyzer software and see the results we've got. So let's select the test. So we can see the summary results. As you can see, the average score was actually much lower than the threshold, which tends to suggest that we can actually run more users on single expert considering this specific workload. We could go to the VSI for max and actually see it in a graph, see how good was the average and even the peaks in terms of uh, user performance. So overall, amazing results for a single X brick running 2500 VDI VMs with Windows 10 and Office 2016.